Okay, so today I'm going to teach you guys how to make a very fast system for shooting a weapon and actually showing a tracer effect uh, upon firing that. And we're also going to give it a little bit of force feedback as well, so haptic feedback. Um, and it's actually going to take us only a couple minutes. It's really simple, really fast. So the first thing uh, I want you guys to notice is I have deleted the main camera from an empty scene and I've dragged in the Steam VR camera rig. So go ahead and import Steam VR and uh, actually we're going to import a couple more assets just to make our lives a lot easier. Uh, and the first one of those is going to be, if you go to Road Turtle Games on the Asset Store, you'll find this Easy Effects and Easy Object Pools. Um, these are really well documented, really well done actually, um, ways to just get really fast muzzle flashes, impacts, and tracers. So you can play around with these. The only one we're actually going to be using for this tutorial is the tracer, because I find it gives a, the user a nice little uh, feedback mechanism for actually shooting your weapon. So once you've actually gotten uh, Make sure you actually get both the easy effects and the easy object pools because the easy effects will not work without the object pools. And both of these are free, as you can see right here. And the next thing is obviously we're going to need a gun. Uh, so let's go ahead and search for gun, hit free only, and we can find this nice little PM40. Uh, you can choose any gun you want. This will work regardless of the model. But if you want to follow along with me, this is the one that I'm choosing. So I've already go, gone ahead and imported this. Uh, once again, another free asset. So let's go back to the scene. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your camera rig. So if you go to this uh, Helica PM40 prefabs, you can see these variants. So I've gone ahead and I've dragged in one already, and I've actually just chosen the first one. And if you double click, you can see where I've positioned it. So basically, uh, oops, let's go ahead and move that. So let's go ahead and see the, you want to match the rotation and the transform uh, values. So these are good values because uh, otherwise it comes in way too big. Uh, which is a problem with a lot of assets when you want to scale them for the size of the controller. So it's kind of annoying, but um, you know, just go, go ahead and bear with it. Uh, put in the, the scale values, the rotation as well, because um, it was rotated a little weird when you imported it. So once you've done that, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to actually just add a script. Um, so I've already pre-written the script just to make things faster, but you guys are going to want to um, either right-click, create a new C-sharp script, or uh, go ahead and actually click add component and type in the name of the script you want to make. So in this case, I'm calling it gun controller. So once we've added that, let's go take a look and see what we have to do. So now that Visual Studio is here, um, if we look, okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is, let's take a look. Uh, so our actual script is on this gun here, not on the controller, which means we need a reference to the controller, which I've said here, controller right so that we can access some of the actual uh, some of the actual things on that controller. So that would be the tracked object, uh, the device, and these two are going to be used solely for the haptic feedback, and also the SteamVR track controller, which we're going to call controller. And the reason we need this is because SteamVR track controller actually gives us access to delegate methods that make it really easy to see when things have been uh, pressed or, or held down. So in our case, we really want to know when the trigger is pressed, and the way we're going to do that is we're actually just going to uh, subscribe to the trigger click to me trigger click method uh, delegate. Sorry. And if you guys haven't are having any trouble with this or maybe not sure what you know all these things are, uh, be sure to check out the, our controller input video. Uh, that's going to give you a lot of insight as to why we're uh, getting references to all these things and which ones we actually need. So uh, the next thing is. Uh, Sorry, I also didn't cover this. We're going to make sure you're using easy effects, otherwise this is going to error out for you. So make sure that we are actually catching a reference for this effect tracer, uh, and we're also getting a transform value, which we're going to call muzzle transform, which we'll see why down here. So uh, once we've subscribed to the trigger click method, uh, we're going to have that call shoot weapon right here. Um, so every time we press the trigger, this, this method is going to be called. And all this method does is it gets a raycast, and this raycast is going to be from the muzzle to uh, in the forward direction from the muzzle. And so this muzzle transform, obviously, we haven't uh, defined yet, but we will. Um, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to trigger a haptic pulse using the index of the tracked object to get the actual device, right? And the device being the SteamVR controller.device. So we're just going to do device.trigger haptic pulse, give it a value. So this value can actually range anywhere from 0 to 4,000, I believe. It's a type U short. So 750 is a good uh, is about the right amount I felt like for a, for a pistol. Uh, so go ahead and use that or any number you really want. And the next thing we're going to do it's simple one line uh, to get that actual really cool tracer effect, which I'll show you guys after we finish up. 
Um, so go ahead and do the same thing. Uh, tracer effect is going to start from the muzzle. It's going to go in the forward vector. And uh, I gave it this 250 range, but that's arbitrary. You can pretty much uh, put whatever you want there, just depending on how long you want the user to see that actual tracer fire out to. Finally, um, we're actually going to check and see if that raycast actually hit anything. So all this does is it says, okay, if we, if we got a hit, then let's use that hit and uh, let's check and see if we've actually hit a rigid body, um, which is probably the biggest expected use case uh, for you guys, because I would assume you'd want to shoot something. And when you actually shoot that something, we're going to debug log we've hit, and we're going to get the name of the object. So um, that's, all, that's all we really need. Uh, the last, thing, last couple things we need to do are drag in the references for the script, right? So whatever controller you put in that gun, let's make sure we drag that in so that we can get these references right here. We can do these get components. And then to actually use the tracer effect, luckily the, uh, the easy effects comes with its own uh, tracer effect, which I think is quite nice. You can modify it as you wish. And finally, we're going to need that muzzle transform. So the muzzle transform is actually relatively easy to do. Um, what I would recommend doing is actually uh, the easiest way is creating a, a sphere inside of the gun. And let's blow that up a little bit so you can see it. And then let's just drag it to the actual muzzle. And this is just so that we have a reference to see, to see where uh, it is. You can also use an empty game object. That might be a little easier. But in any case, just position it uh, just around where the gun should fire out of. And then uh, turn off the collider and the mesh renderer on it. And then I'm going to rename it using F2 to muzzle transform. And the last thing I'm going to do, so this is a little bit wonky. It's probably not the best way to do things. But uh, just for the quick and dirty way, uh, we're going to match the actual rotations. So negative 90, negative 90, negative 90 on the actual muzzle transform. And the reason we're going to do that is if we don't, the forward vector of this transform will be completely different. I think it'll actually be up versus actually forward. And if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. All you really have to know is make sure that this this uh, this rotation value matches this rotation value and you're going to be fine. So now that we've done that, let's drag this muzzle transform in. And uh, that should be good. Actually, one more thing. So if you look at your, sorry, if you look at your actual camera rig and you look at your controller, you're going to see this transform, you're going to see the SteamVR tracked object, but you're not going to see the SteamVR tracked controller. So by default, uh, the camera prefect does not include it. Um, so make sure that you actually add component SteamVR track controller, and that's going to give us access to all these uh, events and delegates that we can actually subscribe to. And as you can see, yeah, this one, right, which is critical to see what we've actually pressed the trigger. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. Uh, one last thing, I guess, if you want to disable the controller model, that's totally up to you. Um, I did. I just unchecked it. Uh, let's hit play, and let's see what we can, uh, see, what we can see. Let me uh, maximize this game window as well. So here we have our gun. We shoot. We can see this tracer, and we get a nice little force feedback as well on the controller. So yeah, um, yeah. if you guys have any questions, comments, let me know. Uh, if you want to see something else, maybe a weapon system, uh, some sort of complex input scheme, uh, just let me know in the comments. I'm always open to suggestions, and thanks for watching.